Hi, I'm Nancy Bronstein, and I am an educator for SVP Worldwide, which stands for Singer, Viking, and Foth, and I work in the Viking and Foth Education Department. And I'm here today with Mickey Hudson, who is also a fellow educator. Mickey, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your, how you started sewing and your, your love of sewing and all that jazz. Well, my name is Mickey Hudson and I am a fellow educator. I also work for SVP in the Viking and Faf side of things. Um, I, I started sewing like many of us do. Uh, my mother uh, sewed for us kids because of finances. Except unlike other stories, my mother was not good at it and she didn't really like it very much. So I took over as soon as I got too embarrassed to wear the crap my mom was making. So I started making my own crap and it was terrible and that's why I call it crap. But I fell in love with sewing. So I was always constantly doing stuff for my dolls and for me and for other things. Um, and then it was in my 20s, I took a beginner sewing class. Finally, I'm like, I'm gonna learn how to do it right. And she straightened out a couple of things like, um, who. I, I found out grain line is important and growing <laughs> straight and the proper seam allowance, all these little things were all important. Uh, but by the end of the six week course, um, all those years of practice had paid off. So once these little things were, were corrected, I was now producing quality stuff. So at the end of the six weeks, she ended up giving me my own beginners sewing course and taught me how to teach and do all that kind of stuff. Um, and I did that for a couple of years and I graduated to the intermediate classes and then more of the advanced classes as I started learning more and uh, she kept teaching me. Um, and then I branched out. I started you know, falling in love with Sandra Betsina on HGTV when she was back when she was on and other sewing teachers. All of a sudden I just kind of got into this other chapter of sewing rather than just the pattern. And um, I ended up going towards industrial sewing. So no pins, no trimming, no basting. It's all, you know, uh, tricks from the garment industry. And then I ended up outgrowing the sewing school that I was in. Um, and then so let's take a break for one second. When you say um, industrial sewing, though, you were still doing garments or home mm -hmm. decks. It's not like you were, you know, producing something in a manufacturing plant. When sometimes people hear right. industrial, they wonder what it means. You mean that you, you got very efficient. You had all these Correct. techniques to do it very quickly right. and efficiently. So, yes, it was. it's the a lot of the techniques from the garment industry and the fashion industry that they do, that they just sit and produce like crazy. Um, but they've been modified to be done with a home sewing machine um, and a home serger. And, and so... Very fast, very efficient. Um, and for me, that's the way I like to sew. Some people enjoy the whole process of everything. And they, the whole thing is this, this glorious, you know, uh, journey that they take. For me, it's like, I've got this idea and I want it finished. I want to get there as quick as possible. And so the industrial shortcuts were perfect for me because that's, that's the way I love to sew. It's just really, really fast. <laughs> So I'm kind of known in my little area as the shortcut queen because of that. Um, if there's an easier, softer way to do anything, I, I, I pretty much know it. Now, when I say shortcuts, too, I, I am not talking about hacky stuff. I'm talking about a shortcut that is either going to, to equal the quality or improve the quality of the finished result. It's, I'm not talking about a shortcut that's going to diminish quality. So I am always looking for good shortcuts and I do incorporate those whenever I can. So you were teaching uh, industrial techniques and mm -hmm. then uh, you got sucked up into SVP world, right? I, did. I started, uh, I moved into quilting, um, which is something I swore I'd never do. Uh, but there was my local quilt shop had this gorgeous quilt and I decided to take that class and that, spurned that little fire um, and then after a while I was I was doing so well at quilting that I got a beginner quilting class at my local dealer and then I started working at my local dealer and then I started working with the embroidery and then I started teaching the embroidery and it just that progression just started until I was uh, a monster <laughs> <laughs> it was like I couldn't learn fast enough I could teach fast enough so yeah it was just I was going crazy, but I was having, I, I, 
it's all been a good time. It has all been a good time. And we, the, the two of us are used to traveling all over the country and teaching until March. I miss so much. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. And uh, since that time though, you've been home, you, you redid your sewing studio. So you've got mm -hmm. it all organized and everything, you know, the way you want it. So what have you been working on since uh, you've been home more? Yeah, my sewing room was a pit. It's a basement sewing room and it was a pit. And I had for over a year, almost two years, I had everything ready to, to fix it up. So I did take this time to fix it up. But yeah, so again, like I said, the way I kind of sew is I do a lot of stuff at once and then I finish everything up really quickly. So these are the things that have been kind of under my needle, um, just going, 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 getting ready. So this is just a fraction of them and the other things are starting to get finished up, but they're, I can't show them to you yet because they're a surprise for, so keep watching this, this space. Um, but one of the things that if you've, if you've seen me travel with you, um, I have, you may have seen this. This is uh, just a, a project from the Premier Plus Two Extra. So everything that's in these little blocks are from the Premier Plus Two Extra. And so I've been wanting to work on a, just a little kind of wall hanging to kind of showcase some of the stuff that you can do. So just, let's just take a second there, uh, Mickey, for people who are kind of not initiated into the whole machine embroidery thing, Premier Plus Two is the embroidery design software that we both teach. And there are different levels of it. You know, you can get a more basic package and then you can step up to extra and then you can step up to ultra, but it's how you can create your own designs. And you created those designs from that software. Yes, it's I, it, the way I kind of... Uh, uh, kind of joke about it is my sewing machine is my, my and my embroidery is all my big box of crayons and then this once you add the the software it's kind of like that giant box of crayons with the sharpener on the back that we all obsessed over when we were kids so it just kind of adds to the sewing and embroidery kind of thing so that's what this does uh, there's plenty you can do with just a embroidery machine but once you start wanting a little bit more and a little more versatility, that's where the software can come in. And yeah, whatever your brain can conceive, you can do with the software. Right. You know, instead, and there, you just instead of taking a, you know, like a design that somebody else did, you can create your own design or you can take apart somebody else's design and take out the palm trees you don't like exactly. and then water greens or whatever. Yeah. So and no, we've all sure. done it. We've all like, we love this design, but this leaf is driving me crazy. So with the software, you can just go take that leaf out of there. And now you've got the perfect design. So, uh, or you can design from scratch, which is kind of with some of the built-in features, which is what this mm -hmm. is. And then Premiere Plus 2 has layers to it. So you there's different levels that you can purchase depending on how much you want to use and you can trade up within so you could start here and go oh i really wish i would have gone up here well you can do that you had some technical difficulties you know the internet is a wonderful thing but not um, maybe 100 percent of the time particularly where i live out in the country but at any rate we are going to pick up our interview where we left off and we were talking about premier plus two software and some of the samples that you've done with the different levels of the software well, the samples I'm working on, because as you'll see, they're not finished. Um, but I've been doing a lot of embroidery. And like I mentioned earlier, they'll all whip up really quickly. Um, but I don't know if this got cut off, but this was the Premiere Plus 2 Extra. And one of the things that I was talking about was the uh, Quilt Block Wizard. So the Quilt Block Wizard is what allows me to do that stippling there. Um, I love it and you'll see it in quite a few of my things. Um, but again, more quilt, um, Premiere Plus 2 Extra. And one of the things is there's a whole bunch of built-in applique designs. And in this one, I'm showing the three different options with the, the satin stitch yep. or they have a motif one or they have a motif two. So there's three different ways you can do applique. And these are part of the super designs. So with the super designs, there's a whole plethora of designs. And the reason they call them super designs is we can do all kinds of stuff with them. 
So for instance, I don't know if you can see the background of this is quilted and they were actually baby cartoons. But with the super designs, I was able to just, instead of doing embroidery, I told it I wanted to just do a line. And then I said, I just want to do a running stitch. So I was able to turn this embroidery design into a quilt design. So it was really fun. And it's the same thing with this. So these are some of the, the super design dinosaurs. And again, I took those dinosaurs and said, I just want to do a line. And so you see the quilting in the background is just the outline. So I used the design as my quilting design, quilting background. Another thing about uh, Premiere Plus 2 that is super cool. So if you already have em uh, embroidery, like uh, the Premiere Plus or the 6D or 5D or Truey or any of those, um, one of the things when you type in your wording, you have to type it all out. In Premiere Plus 2, we can copy a whole thing of things and just paste it and it'll fill out the whole thing. And that's what I did here. In the background here, I just found a poem, a butterfly poem and copied it and then just pasted the whole poem and picked out a script font. And can you bring it just a little closer to the camera? And turned that into- Yeah, my, now we can see it, yep. Into my background quilting. So just a lot of fun stuff. So again, playing with fonts and stuff. Um, again, I always like play with my, my software. It's just, I always have to do something. So this is something that I'm currently working on and it says always be yourself unless you can be a llama corn, then, be a, then always be a llama corn. And the reason that is, is because uh, from the MySonet library, there is a llama. But I took from the MySonet library a unicorn and took the unicorn off of that <laughs> and put it onto the llama. And then I just took some little flower designs right from that were built in in the little mini embroideries and gave it a little hat of flowers. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've added some ribbon embroidery. So the I'll let Nancy explain my Sonet library so you don't listen to me the whole time. So okay. Nancy, you want to talk about my Sonet library? Well, my Sonet library came into being because we have wireless access on our top of line machines. And my Sonet library is a new feature where it's a live streaming embroidery subscription service, the only one there is in the world. And basically what that means is on um, your computer, you can go to mysonet.com, click on the library link, and there's a search fun function there, and there's over 5,000 designs that you can download if you have a subscription 24 seven. So you can search on say, I want to do cut work that has flowers and I want it a certain size and it'll show you just those embroideries that are meet those criteria. Or I want to see all animals or I want to do um, ba a baby quilt. So I want to see baby designs. So it's a very fast way to find just what you need as opposed to searching your hard drive and uh, wanting to pull your hair out, thinking, where did I put that design that I have? Now that I have about three zillion designs. My Sonnet library, you can find it very easily. And like I said, any time of the day or night, you can stitch out whatever you want and you're good to go. Another nice thing about My Sonnet library is it's, it's more than just designs. There are tips and tricks. There's inspiration. There's all kinds of help and ideas. And uh, this is how you can use this tool. And that's it's just a wonderful source of designs and information and help. And just it's just wonderful. But one thing I didn't the, mention is that you find the design you want. You click on a little icon that looks like a paper airplane. It goes right over to your sewing machine magically. Right. Or yeah. if you want it on your computer, you, you choose your computer and, it's, and it opens up right in the software on your computer. So that's where the wireless aspect comes into play. It's very, you know, super easy. Yeah, you can save it and open it later, or you can zip it wherever you want to work on it right now. It is awesome. Um, but this is the ribbon embroidery. This is kind of a furry ribbon, and this is your tip more uh, traditional organza ribbon. But that's a work in progress. Um, and then on my 
who's scoring a Viking, Mickey Sows, who's scoring a Viking. Um, I did put a video of the Magnificent Lion. And this is uh, Facebook. Uh, Facebook. Sorry, what did I say? You didn't say what it was. Oh, I know some people do Instagram, you know. So. Yeah, my Facebook page. Um, and so this was the Magnificent Lion. And it is turning into a bigger quilt just with black and whites and colors and all that kind of stuff. But because I was doing so much black and white, um, I wanted to kind of tone it down a little bit. So I went and did the Magnificent Lion again with just the shades of gray. And so that is going in there. And then if you are in the um, school of thought that uh, odd numbers always work better than even. So now I have two lions or two embroideries. I need a third one. So I again went to my Sonet library and found a sun. And so that will go into part of it. And the reason you're seeing it in blocks is again, that's just the way I work. I broke it down into pieces rather than trying to put all these corners together. So everything's in big chunks and then I'll just put it together with all straight lines. And then another thing that again, more of that quilt block wizard. Sorry, I have been in a ribbon embroidery kind of frenzy lately. So that's what I've got a lot of right now. Um, but the ribbon embroidery. So I brought this in and I had to create an outline, which is a whole lesson in itself uh, using the software. But then I was able to take that in and do the echo quilting around that and then have the ribbon embroidery on top. The echo quilting in the quilt block wizard. And in the quilt block wizard. So in the, the, the quilt block wizard, you can select to do the whole piece and quilt that, or you can select around a design. There's a lot of options and select around a design which is what I did here. So instead of doing the whole piece, it just does the echo quilting right around the design. And then this one I used, instead of doing the stippling or echo quilting, I did a font. So I chose a font to go around this echo quilting. A now, font that looked like a heart. Uh, not a font, a, uh, a machine stitch, yes. Yeah. So it is a machine stitch from the software. This is also a ribbon design, but I didn't do ribbon. I just colored it in. And this is part of a sequence that I'm doing. So what, did you use like 12 weight thread or something? Or what, what do you got? Uh, no, I did use cotton thread. So, cause I knew it would absorb the paint, the, the fabric pens better. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I just didn't do, the embroidery. And then this was, I was just experimenting and I put two different sizes of thread or ribbon into the ribbon embroidery. This can also be seen on um, my Who's Grana Viking uh, Facebook page. And then the other thing that I'm obsessed with is the binding attachment. And I do have binding attachment videos on my Facebook. So, um, so while, while you're talking about Facebook, if you would just repeat again the names of your two pages, for, and I will put put it on uh, in on the bottom of the screen when so I so Mickey sews. Mickey sews has been a moniker of mine for a long time. It's in my emails, and it used to be on my business cards. And it's Mickey sews is just kind of my name. So Mickey sews at Husqvarna Viking, or Mickey sews FF, and Mickey sews one word. Just Mickey sews FF. Mickey Sews, who's going to Viking. So I've just put up the pages, so I'm still building content, uh, but, but, but watch it because I am starting to add stuff as I'm finishing things up. Mm -hmm. But the binding attachment has been my latest obsession. I just absolutely love it. Um, and if you're unfamiliar with the binding attachment, the binding attachment will do attach your binding both on the front and the back all at once. So it's just, it's just so awesome. And you could do it for quilts, you could do it for hems, you could do it for finishes, you could do it for clothing. I know Nancy has a jacket that she, she did, mm -hmm. the lining was done with the, um, the inside. Um, and then uh, the apps that come with the MySonet capable machines. 
Um, I'm just in love with the little apps. Uh, the some of you may have seen this if you've been around and traveling, but these are just the little apps that you get on you use on the phone. So I just scanned in my name and turned it into an embroidery. So you can, for those of you that are quilters, you can actually autograph your quilts, take a picture, send it over, and autograph your quilts. It's really fun. And this was a drawing that somebody just drew for me. And again, I threw this into the Quilt Block Wizard, um, this little guy, into the Quilt Block Wizard, and did the quilting around it, and then did the stitching on top. So this is another example of, this is my granddaughter. Everybody say, aw. Yeah, I love this one. <laughs> yeah. So this I turned uh, her picture into um, an embroidery. And in this case, I actually took one picture. And one of the options on the app is you can darken or lighten it. So I darkened it and saved that. And then I lightened it and saved that. And that's where the two tones come in. Because when I darkened it, it gave me a little bit more definition than the lighter. And it's just stitched out the other way. So what you see here dark is actually my light saving. And then what you see the lighting, light is my darker saving because it's giving me darker. So, but, and then this is just her name. I brought it into my software and just repeated her name over and over again. And then this is just a, a font. And again, I took the, again with the quilt block wizard, that is a, a stippling stitch that I set to straight instead of curved. So it creates a little different uh, look. And then again, the, the built-in motifs, which are your stitches. Um, and there's quite a variety of stitches with the software. So um, I'm not just limited to what comes with my Husqvarna Viking or my FAF. Um, there's more. So uh, it gives me a little bit more versatility. Um, anyway, so that's what's under my needle. Well, these are not under my needle. These are finished. But that's what's under my needle. And like I said, I have a few things that you will be seeing uh, later. I just can't show you yet because it's a surprise. And uh, so they'll be coming up. Yeah, we've both been busy uh, sewing away while we've been home to have uh, new samples to show when we finally get back on the road again and also to show during our virtual classes. And uh, of course, the company we work for is coming out with new and different things all the time. So we got to stay on top of that. Can't let our samples get stale. So we're busy sewing away all the time. And we're also doing these virtual classes now where we, um, via the internet, will um, go into a store um, via the internet and uh, the store owner will have their customers there and we can teach them a class over the internet, which is um, not as good as being there, I have to say, but pretty good since- well, Under the circumstances. Under the circumstances, <laughs> pretty sweet. Um, but, you know, we both would much rather be there right with the students and, you know, helping with a little bit more of a personal touch going to each person, but um, it's better than not being able to go at all. Right. And right. it's nice to be able to be with our sewing people. It is. It is. Yeah, yeah it is so good. Yeah. But yeah, I'll be ready to get back on the road. So. Uh, yeah. Right. Hopefully sooner rather than later, but we'll see. Yeah. So um, anything else you want to add? Anything I should have asked you that I didn't? Not that I could think of, although I could sit here and talk all day. So <laughs> um, I always joke that I could talk until next Tuesday because I can. Um, and even now, it's like I've got buckets of samples. I'm like, ooh, more time. I'll just go grab some more samples. Um, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you an oddball question. When you uh, see what you come up with, when you're doing um, your all your shortcuts and things with garment making, is there um, an atypical way that you use a foot or a foot that you use all the time for garment making that you know helps you do things fast? Um, when it's just straight up clothing construction, I use the quarter inch piecing foot. Um, Why do you do that with clothing? Because my seams are, other than your long seams, which are your front seams or your side seams, which are five eighths, everything else is either a quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch. So that quarter inch piecing covers both of them. So I have the quarter inch 
mark and then I have the three eighths of an inch mark. But as far as uh, the accessory feet that I, I absolutely love are the ones with the, the blade in it, the edge stitching, the edge joining, and the left edge top stitching. Mm -hmm. Those because I can do all that top stitching and get it like absolutely perfect. Yeah. Um, so people always look at it and go, did you do that with the twin needle? No, I didn't. I used this foot and I'll just that foot and I'll show you how I did that. So yeah, I, I do love those feet. I use those, those a lot. I did another interview um, with uh, Kathy Sawyer, which I don't know if you saw. She, is, she used to be an educator and now she is doing um, mainly Alter um, alterations and she makes beautiful things, beautiful gowns. And one of the feet that she likes to do, use is also um, the quarter inch foot because of the fact that she doesn't like to have to change her stitch plate because she's trying to you know, crank out the, the work. She doesn't want to take the time to change it from a zigzag. I mean, from a, um, a um, yeah, from a zigzag to a single needle hole. But she feels like the quarter inch foot with the single needle hole in the foot gives her a better straight stitch. Yeah, I, and I do agree with that to somewhat. Um, but I am a big fan of that straight stitch needle plate as well. Um, yeah. Especially if you've ever worked on a corner of anything where you have to come and turn a corner, um, that straight stitch needle plate is what's going to prevent you from getting all sucked down in there. Yeah, and, yeah, in that corner. definitely in piecing. You know, you, yeah, do, in piecing. you know, when you're going to do embroidery, you're going to do piecing. You want to put take the yeah. time to put that straight stitch plate. On. And some of the the top of the line machines now know which plate it has in it, which is an extra, extra bonus. Um, because I am notorious for forgetting which plate I have. There. So uh, I love now that it, it says, nope, can't do that. You have a straight stitch plate in. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Watching out for you. Yeah, it does. They, are, they do protect you, yes. Okay, well, I think I'm going to end this here. Thanks for your time and um, being a good sport about the technical difficulties. And uh, hopefully... Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll talk again virtually soon, I'm sure, but hopefully yeah. close in, in the not too distant future. Yeah, I so, I, uh, real soon. Yeah, yeah. Really so we'll say goodbye to everybody here, and then I'm going to stop the recording. Okay. I hope that you enjoyed this interview. And if you did enjoy it, please feel free to go to your local dealer, Viking Rapoff, and inquire about potentially having one of these educators come to your local store so you could take a class with them. Also, if you saw this uh, interview on YouTube, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. There are many other interviews coming up or already posted. And if you saw this on Facebook, please like, like <laughs> the video and leave me a comment. I hope you all stay well, stay safe, and get to have fun sewing very soon. Thanks for joining us.